Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek. VR News for Wednesday, October 19th, 2016. Coming to you from another hotel room with a freight train that runs about every 15 minutes. I'm currently in between freight trains, so I'm going to try to get right into it. So let's jump into uh, VR, guys. Starting with a bit of preamble, some of you may have noticed that there was a video up that I pulled after about two minutes. And I apologize if there's anybody that was watching that uh, and kind of got it yanked from them. What I hear is what you probably want, or what you hear from me now is basically uh, what you watched last night. Here's the why. So I just felt that the subject matter needed more due diligence. It requires me to be home with my Sony PlayStation VR to do, again, further due diligence, further testing, uh, to you know really provide a thorough examination of PlayStation tracking. I just thought ultimately that would be better than a, a quick one-off. But I am gonna just provide a really quick summary of what that video was about. Uh, without getting into super details, I'll leave that for the um, upcoming video. So essentially, when I, it, it's an update addendum video is what the intent was to the Sony PlayStation VR 48 hours video that I had uploaded. And to that point, I had experienced no tracking issues with Sony PlayStation VR. That changed playing, you know, one of the two games you guys highly recommended, uh, Thumper, which I enjoyed, by the way, and Batman Arkham VR, which I, despite what I'm about to say, enjoyed. And really, let's start off with a positive real quick. The positive, there's a point in the game you're putting on Batman's garb. And if you don't want to hear the spoiler, fast forward about 30 seconds or look at my timeline. But you're putting on his garb and after you put on his mask, you're greeted with a portrait mirror about a foot in front of you. And it's the Batman staring back at you. You move your head, he moves his head, scowl and all. And it's this amazing moment of presence that... I haven't felt in any other VR, any other VR experience or game, not to that extent anyways. You have moments in games where there's reflections, absolutely. There's other VR games that have done that, but not in this way and not paced and built up to in this way. So that's the positive. Now let's, uh, let's get to the negative um, and that is the tracking. So with Batman Arkham VR, there is a calibration and it's a two part calibration process. It's put it this way. You're doing two things at once, not one after the other. You've got to line up the bat symbol with a circle. And I didn't have it in front of me here. Now I can't remember if it was the controller. And then the other thing you got to align is yourself with the camera. So either way, there's two things you have to align to find a sweet spot. Now that sweet spot took me about four, five minutes to get. And it required me moving my furniture, my camera, the PlayStation, the camera again, and myself until I found that sweet spot. Once I did, I really felt boxed in and the game's locomotion system just enhanced that boxed in feeling by not letting you even throw teleportation circles around. So they use teleportation, but it's set movements right you're picking a spot and then you just appear there so those kind of were the two negatives but it's that first one the tracking one that that i really wanted to get out because that was more playstation related or is it is it software is it a bit of both that's the extra testing that i want to do go back try to look at it objectively and compare it go back to some of the other games that i didn't have the issue with and try to do the same types of things and see you know, maybe that existed there all along and I just was so into the game doing what it wanted that I didn't experience those movements. So look for that. That'll be upcoming. So let's jump into the news, guys, starting with Microsoft. So there's a wing of Microsoft, their research division, one of their R&Ds. They have multiple demonstrating VR controller prototypes with unique haptic technology. So there's two in particular, one called their normal touch, the other called the texture touch. Now, how these work differently is they are using kinesthetic feedback. So that's like a, a force feedback, the type you get in a PC racing wheel. You know, when 
you're maybe moving the wheel in one direction and you get that counter resistance like to get that effect of sliding in mud or ice right the counter steer feeling uh, and that deep rumble it's that type of feedback that they're working on in an axis you know tracked controller so they've got those two the normal touch uses three servo motors to operate a small disc with tilt and extrusion mo movements the texture touch uses a bank of 16 servos to operate a 4x4 four four pixel array of squares. And these squares will pop up to your touch to form the shapes that you're seeing on the screen, that you're touching. You know, if it's a line, if it's a rectangle, a square, etc. right? The type of technology is the type of technology that we're looking for to really push VR forward. And we've had other examples of companies that are doing that. Now we see Microsoft is on board with that. It's all inspiring and inspires me with confidence that look, this stuff, all of these different areas that need to be, you know, evolved much beyond their current state, all of them coming together is going to get us that future VR that, my God, we can only dream about, right? Uh, it's great now. It's going to be so much better. So fantastic. Things like that. I just love reading about it because it just gives me so much confidence that we are moving in that direction. Next up, Google has been going on a bit of a VR hiring spree. Now, granted, just to kind of be a bit objective on this article, you know, 15 positions in 12 months for Small companies, yeah, that could be absolutely dramatic, but we're talking about a company that has thousands of employees, so the actual percentage is very low. However, it's in the virtual reality industry, so that kind of, you know, picks up the profile a bit more. Some of the positions, and this is all, you know, 12 months around the Daydream announcement that they were doing this hiring. So there's a link. You can see some of the positions. A few I'm just going to mention. Creative Director VR, Software Engineer uh, for YouTube Virtual Reality, Structural Mechanical Engineer VR. So you, you get the idea. There, It was in all aspects of virtual reality. Pretty, pretty thorough in terms of covering the spectrum of VR disciplines. So again, another company really taking on VR. Uh, I'm hopeful it's all this forward momentum that's going to get us those breakthrough moments, you know, to get us to really move from that start line. I know the finish line is far, far away, but as long as we're moving down the track, that's a good thing. There was a YouTuber and uh, I believe his name is Matt Onery or rather his channel. And he's got a video up showing how to use the PlayStation VR on a PC using a program called TriDef 3D. Now, essentially this allows you to play PC games in cinematic mode. The reason I'm talking about this story is not that that's really amazing because to me that's not that amazing. You can do that with the Rift and the Vive. Granted, they are PC devices, but really at the end of the day, the Sony PlayStation VR is itself a you know, USB using, HDMI using, PC peripheral, albeit, you know, a more proprietary operating system. So I don't find it amazing. I'm also not sure, you know, how useful this is for the kind of people that would want to use it that way. And what I mean by that is using that to play PC games in cinema mode, if you're a PC gamer to begin with, it's more than likely unless it was for economic reasons, that you probably went for a Rift or a Vive or both. Why would you do it with, you know, the lower resolution of the Sony PlayStation VR? You can do it with one of these others. Not only can you do it, you can do it without all the limitations of, you know, buying software like TriDef because it does cost beyond the trial period. Yeah, so is it console people that would do that because they forked out the money for the console. Do they have the gaming PC? So that's where I'm, you know, uh, a, a little unclear and unsure of how 
awesome because like I said, I don't think it's that awesome. It, it's cool and it's worth reporting from the point of view that it's it's great. That could lead to other things, right? Maybe some kind of hack or work around or work with, who knows, I've, heard, I've seen crazier things to actually have the Sony PlayStation VR work on a PC. I mean, think about it. That would be a nice counter to the whole Xbox One, you know, the future Xbox being simultaneous PC and uh, Xbox One. If Sony could come out and say, look, yeah, we're making our device. Here's some drivers. PC people knock yourselves out. I mean, like I said, I've seen crazier things. I think that would be pretty cool and would instantly introduce a third player in the PC VR market significant player next up after that the uh day of the devs annual public indie game festival is coming to san francisco and it's going to be free but uh you know you know that old saying and i've said it before myself in videos anything that's offered free is it ever really truly free i think that applies here to a certain degree and i'll explain why so the partners that are putting the show on for developers is well the two are double fine productions and i am 8-bit so just a bit of background double fine has had you know to put it bluntly public relations issues the last couple of years stemming from their kickstarter many people not all but many felt let down by by the company because of the way they handled the release the delays the questions about the funding and where it went and you know again not accusatory that was an actual opinion shared by a lot of people so you've got them as part of the equation you also have i am 8-bit what do they do well they sell gaming merchandise what kind of gaming merchandise do they sell? Well, merchandise for a lot of, you know, VR games, regular Steam players, indie devs, some non-indie devs. Do you think there's going to be tables and stands selling merchandise there? Of course there will be. And look, they're going to make their revenue back. The double, you know, the um, the other guys... What's their reason for Double Fine? Well, again, PR. That's a nice thing to have on your resume to kind of build that public confidence again in your company is goodwill gestures. And that's certainly what this is. And that's in no way meant to slight the event. It's still probably going to be a very useful event. It's just me personally being a little skeptical and saying, look, they say it's free. And yeah, you're not paying admission, but there's some reasons for holding this in my, again, my opinion. And I'm usually a glass half full, not a glass half empty type of guy. But uh, in this case, at least it's giving me, you know, uh, a reason to think about it a little deeper than just on the surface. It's free. But for anyone interested, uh, it'll be November 5th at the Midway 900 Marin Street in San Francisco. And not just open to devs the public as well and again no cover charge oh the other reason the main reason i mentioned this because you're probably thinking epics that has nothing to do with virtual reality it does actually from the point of view and this is why it caught my eye in the first place they are going to be showing unreleased vr titles at this one day event and psychonauts in the rhombus of ruin lost ember static luna and rock band vr are among the VR titles that are going to be shown. Next headline and last news piece. This one I thought was really cool. Company called Uranium, but spelled U-R-A-N-I-O-M, promises a universal 3D avatar for VR and AR apps, games, experiences. They have a really cool trailer and even though to me personally, the Old Spice commercial is kind of played out and, and so has the Dosa, uh, Dosaki beer one. But they've done this trailer slash commercial in that Old Spice 
you know, the spirit of that Old Spice commercial, which I thought was pretty cool. But not only that, they say their technology is going to be very flexible for devs to incorporate in their game engine. So it basically, it's able to take a scan of your head and craft that into a 3D avatar. Now, remember what I talked about just a little bit earlier when I talked about that moment of presence with Batman? To me, personally, there may be times like that Facebook social app where I want to see a cartoon avatar of myself, sure. You know, like uh, like you get on Nintendo on the Wii when you're making your character a cartoony representation of yourself. But there's other times where, hell yeah, I want that hero in the game to be me, to really look like me. And there are times where I'll craft a guy to look like me. Well, you know, to play my alter ego, why not actually have the real me? And again, pretty impressive in this trailer, I think, uh, because it does look like the guy and could really add to virtual reality if again you know have moments like that with the reflection can you imagine being in a vr game room scale or not hell it could be the cockpit of your ship elite dangerous but you've got the reflection and that reflection you're looking at when you take that in-game visor off is you like really you i just think that would be just awesome for uh presence so the uh founder and ceo uh loic l-o-i-c Ledoux, obviously a French name, Loic. Anyways, uh, he says that, yeah, his company has created this technology to transform, like I was saying earlier, a regular scan into a fully 3D realized one for use in games. All right, guys, that's it for uh, hopefully, no, it actually will be my last episode on the road. Thankfully, I will be back to the man cave and its goodies, and I can't wait. As always, guys, cheers, and definitely... Catch you on the VR flip side.